Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna share this quick and simple saag recipe with you. I put this on my Instagram story. It was a paratha I made with it and everybody wanted to know the recipe. It's such a simple recipe. This is how my mom makes it and then I make it like this as well. This is sarsusu ka saag, or we call it gandala ka saag. And this is about six bunches. I've cleaned it, washed it thoroughly about six to eight times in water. And then I've let it drain out. Here I've got some chili flakes and salt and crushed garlic. On the heat, I've got a pan on with a half a cup of oil. I'm just gonna add the garlic to this. I'm just gonna let this lightly brown and then I'm gonna add the salt to this. Guys, this isn't brown enough now, so I'm gonna add the salt. Be careful because it's gonna splatter. It looks quite a lot, but it will just wilt down. Half of it now, and let it wilt down, and then I'm gonna add the other half. Just put a lid on it. Leave it on a high heat, and just put a lid on it, and it will just start wilting. I've used garlic today, but usually I use uh, aspartido or hing. That's what it's called, but my children don't like it that much, so I've used garlic today. You could use either of them or together. It's all totally up to you if you have any of them. It's built it down so much and it's let off so much liquid. I'm going to add the rest of it in now as well. Just add it all in there. You're not going to add any more liquid to this. It's just going to cook in its own liquid. So that's all added in there. I'm going to do that again. Put, oh, I'm going to put the lid on it again and let it rip down. Half wilted now. I'm going to add the chili flakes and the salt to it now. That's all the spices that will go in there. I know some people make it completely different to this. That's like the Punjabi style. This is more of a Kashmiri, Azad Kashmir style, like Mirpur side. This is how my mom makes it. And that's exactly how I'll make it today as well. And after I've cooked this down, we're going to let it cool and make the nice, delicious parantas with it. Totally just eat it with chapati. It's totally up to you. But in our families, everybody prefers the parantas with this salt. Quite a lot of water in there now. You just released all that liquid. And I'm going to turn this into onto a really low heat. And I'm going to let it cook for a good 20 to 30 minutes because it's quite tender, the salt. It won't take that long. And after about 10, 15 minutes, I'll show you how it looks. After 10 to 12 minutes, it looks something like this. It's still not fully cooked, but I just gave it a taste. The, Chili is fine for me. I just added a tiny bit more salt, it was less. I'm gonna let this still cook on a low heat until it becomes nice and tender. I'll just show you. It's not fully cooked. So I'm gonna let this cook and we're gonna do the flour for the parantas. I'll show you how I make them. In this stand mixer bowl, I've got two cups of chapati flour and I've got one uh, cup of plain flour and one and a half teaspoons of salt. If you haven't got a stand mix, you could do it by hand. I've already put a recipe for how to make dough for parantas and I'll link that for you. So I'm just going to make a simple dough out of this. Just put it on a medium speed and add water slowly. We're looking for a nice and smooth dough. But not too thin and not too hard. So I'm just going to add more water. Every flower is different, you just keep an eye on and see. If it needs more water, just add more water, and if it doesn't, just leave it how it is. And just let this go for about a couple of minutes, and then I'll, if I need to add more water, I will. See the flowers come together. I did ask, add some more water to this. And I'm just going to let it knead for another two, three minutes. As you can see, the dough is done now. I'm just going to take this out of the bowl, bring it all together as you can. Transfer it to this bowl. I'm gonna put cling film on this and let this rest until the saw is done and it'll be nicely rested and then we can make the parantas. Guys, in this pan I've got a whole block of butter and I'm letting it melt on a really low heat. I'm gonna turn this into a desi ghee. The natu the pure desi ghee my children don't like, but this one is really tasty and when you eat a paranta, it won't make it feel sickly. So for, I've added also just one this spoon of chapati flour to it as well. So I'm going to let this 
cook. I'm just going to turn it on a high, just a tiny bit higher heat. And I'm going to let this cook for about a good 20 minutes and I'll show you how it looks. It'll just separate the flour and the butter will separate and you'll get clarified butter. And the butter is done as well and the ghee's come out. All the milk solids I've collected onto the flour. I'm going to let this rest for about five, six minutes until it cools down and then I'm going to sieve this into a, a bowl and let it cool. Flour's totally settled down now, as you can see. I've got some already made. I'm just going to add this to this box. Try not to get any flour. You could use a sieve, but I'm just going to just do it like this. There you go. And this ghee is made. It took about 40 minutes to fully cook. I'll show you. Nice and hot now. I've just put the heat on high now. And I'm going to cook this on the high heat for about 10 minutes until all the liquid has dried up and the oil comes out. The sag is completely ready now. Let the oil out. As you can see, I'm going to push this off. Transfer some in the plate for the parantas. I want it nice and cool. As I said, guys, you can eat this with roti just like this. But I got a lot of requests to make parantas with this sauce, So that's what I'm going to show you today. It's just amazing how much is reduced what we started with and it's not even half of the saw when you make it. So this is going to cool it down now and then we'll I've make got everything ready to make the parantas. The dough is nice and set now. I had it in the fridge. The butter is cooled down as well and the sag. I'm going to take one dough bowl. It depends how big you want the parantas to be. I'm just going to make like a medium sized one. So I'm just going to take this amount, just put some plain flour on. I'll make the beer off of the dough bowl. Just dip it in more plain flour. For parantha doughs, I always add plain flour to it because it makes it really nice and crispy. And you can use just chapati flour if you want to and don't add the plain flour. But it just gives it another dimension to the crispiness. Roll this out like you roll out a chapati. You don't have to be really careful because I'll show you what we're going to do next. So that's done now. We're going to get the ghee to spread it lightly on all of the chapati. Not too much. Guys, when you try this paranta, you will love it because it's going to be extra crispy. And I'm just going to dust some plain flour to this. That's what gives you the layers. And slowly now from one side, just roll it over. That's it, that's done now. I'm going to cut this in half. Now we're going to get two beardos out of these or dough balls. Just pinch it from the side that you cut because you don't want the butter to go everywhere. So I'm just going to make small dough balls like this. And just put it in the plain flour. And same with this one. I've rolled one of the chapatis out and I'm going to roll the other one. I'll show you how it I do that so just press it lightly in the flour and with your hands the way you make roti to spread it is easier to roll out then a bit more plain flour and then you roll it out you can see the layers of the pronto so you're going to roll this out the same size as the other one you rolled up before That looks fine. I'm going to leave this side where the butter is showing on the outside. I'm going to get the sog and just add it 
in the middle of the printer. Spread it out. Try to get into the, all the edges so it's nice and filled. You don't want an empty printer. So I'm going to do all this and then I'm going to put the other chapati, the other on, top. chapati on top. As you can see, they're the same size. Just press it down with your hand. All the edges so it's nice and tightly packed and sealed. I'm just going to add some dry flour on here and some on top. And lightly now, you just roll it out. You can see the salt coming through. You want the edges, try to get them nice and thin. Carefully pick this up. I've got a pan heating now on the gas. This pan is just for making parathas, guys. I know it looks a bit old because I use this for the parantas, it ruins all plants, so I keep this one, especially for them. Slightly try to make it a tiny bit bigger, and then just put it on top of the pan. I've got this on a really low heat. I'm going to turn it up to a medium. The best cooked parantas are when they're nicely, nice and slowly cooked. You don't want it on really high heat because then they just burn and there's no taste to them. I'm going to let this cook on one side. You'll see, it'll just go like a translucent color on top and then we'll turn it over. Now it's ready to flip, as you can see it's translucent. We'll turn it over. And now it's nicely cooked on that side. I'm just gonna add the butter on this. By the time I've done with this side, the other side will be half cooked as well. Just nice and evenly all over one side of the pronto. I'm still going to have a medium heat. Don't turn it off, just leave it on that one. And this over now. There you go, as you can see, this side is cooked lightly as well. Just going to add a bit more of the ghee onto this side as well. Start to pop up, so it'll be nice and crispy now. That's enough, guys. If I need any more, then I'll add this. Slowly with the tongs, just move it so it cooks evenly on that side. You can smell this. It smells really delicious. Carefully turn this over now. Look at that, guys. That is beautiful and golden and crispy. Can you hear that? So nice and crispy. The more you lightly slowly cook it the more crispy and delicious the pronto bees as you can see just slowly just turn it have a look it's nearly there guys have a plate ready with some kitchen paper on top so the excess oil will go on to the tissue it's cooked now i'm going to take this up off and just Put it on the plate. What I'm going to do is just lightly open this. Can you see the filling all the way through? And when you do this, it just leaves, lets the steam out and the pronto will stay crispy. It's beautiful and crispy pronto. We'll make a few more of these and then we'll serve it out. I made another one as well, guys, as you can see. It's nice and crispy as well. And I've served it, just cut it into triangles. You could serve it with some more salt and yogurt, or you can have it with the tea like Pakistani chai and a jar. It's totally up to you. Make sure you try this recipe. You would love it. It's so nice and easy, but delicious. And you can make it for your family and friends and they will be really impressed. I hope you like this recipe. If you try it, please let me know. I love reading everybody's comments. And please subscribe to my channel, share it, and press the bell icon. Every time I post, you will get notified. Hope to see you soon. Allah Hafiz.